It's another, uh, this is a Harley B special. Uh, this little baby here started a cavalcade of incidents. Uh, Uncle Dutch's desk is really a mess and so is my shop downstairs. I have now a fourth bike with a bad wrist pin. Uh, the bike buried the flying horse. Um, basically a good engine when they function right, especially the ones with the 40 millimeter port. I wanted to start by telling you uh, what you want to hear, but I want to tell you what you really want to hear. There's some culpability here. I don't know how to fully uh, articulate this all in a little video. This is going to take a little time. The wrist pins did a lot of damage. The motor wouldn't run right. Uh, it didn't start right. It was jamming up. A lot of people are going through this. And the culprit is Bikeberry, who has the culp culpability. The actual people that sell this good idea, these engines to you, this is our uh, raffle bike engine, had the bad wrist pin. I sent out for replacement parts with an order for other parts and got everything but what I wanted. Instead of sending me the PK80 piston, which I ordered directly, they rely and they prey upon people like you and your inexperience. Well, what type of engine is it? Well, how the hell do you know? This is where Uncle Dutch and Harley B Company is tr going to try to bring the business my way. And I'm going to try to talk Matt into doing a little more manufacturing. I don't have a whole lot of my products here to show you. But the first thing they did was I have two bikes now with bad wrist pins and I can't even rely on Bikeberry to get me the correct uh, pistons to repair those engines. And as you can see, those marks are from the wrist pin not guiding the piston up the cylinder and that's why the engine wasn't idling and running correctly. Remember this? This was an alleged replacement they had sent me early on to fix another issue of the same. This is the one where the piston gets hung up and it's the wrong bore. This engine, when I ordered it, was supposed to have the 40 millimeter port. That's the intake port. It's a 32 millimeter port. I have two engines waiting For these intakes. These are 40 millimeter intakes. Naturally it won't fit the engine it's supposed to repair. I was supposed to have two of these because there's another engine which this one's going to go on it but I'm still left now with three engines not running. Okay? One the jug and the piston and the wrist pin and the, and the bearing was completely shot. They neither sent me gaskets or they did send me a gasket. This is how Bikeberry sent me the head gasket, like it was stomped on. It was actually in the package, all deformed with this. Uh, the bolt scraped it up. It's absolutely useless. It's like a cupcake wrapper or candy wrapper somebody discarded. It goes in a shit can. I can't even use it. Then, for the green monster bike I'm building, for Mr. Lobb's bike, uh, I ordered an inch and a quarter hub adapter. When I was on the phone with the kid from Bikeberry, he was so confused. He says, well, we have one point this, one point. I says, I need an inch and a quarter hub adapter. You know, then he's rattling it off and he says, well, one, one, 1.25. I says, I need a 1.25 hub adapter. That is an inch and a quarter. You see, at Bikeberry, they're too stupid to even read one of these and know what an inch and a quarter is as where it relates to a ruler. An inch and a quarter on a ruler with a veneer, this is called a veneer, at least back in my day. They, uh, some people call it dial caliper and stupid names. I'm a military flight line engineer, and uh, I've been a perfectionist all my life. I have a lot of uh, building experience. I want to show you my, some of my pets uh, here. That is my work. That's my baby. That's what I drive. That's what I built. Not to mention the houses and old homes like this one that I restore. This is an inch and a half hub adapter. 1.50 inch and a half on the scale here. 
So, I already have inch and a half puck adapters. I needed the one to fit the bike that I'm working on. You see, Bikeberry preys upon people like you. They try to make it like you're miscommunicating and you don't know what you're talking about. And when you have a problem with an engine, it's probably something you're doing because I've already had that insinuated with me. Getting back to my flight line engineering days, uh, right when I got on the Enterprise, you had to be an exceptionally bright person because of the uh, accident that happened on January 14th, I believe it was 1965. Uh, a warhead on, on January uh, 14th, 1969. I'm sorry, but it was a day that was burned into us. A warhead lit up on that ship. Uh, the front of a missile went hot. Somebody must have left the switch on. They never really did find the definite cause of the accident, and there was never really another uh, maritime naval aircraft carrier disaster such as the one on January 14th, 1969. But at that time, the captain of that ship, after all those deaths and all that destruction, you had to be an exceptionally bright uh, an individual that applied yourself. Uh, the captain gave hardly anybody any com comments. The only, the only comments and compliments he gave you was when he promoted you or they gave you a rank or they gave you some kind of commission or whatever. I declined a lot of stuff where I really didn't want to climb. I just loved working on aircraft. And one day it was, uh, Captain was doing a tour of the ship. They used to come through with the XO at certain times whenever the Captain got in the mood to be kind. It was right near the Christmas holiday. The Captain stopped by my, my uh, berth and uh, Captain Bowman was in the room with me at the time, uh, my deceased business partner. The captain says to me, he, Richard says to me, he says, uh, Yakel, he says, I'm going to call you side. He says, you worked all night, he says, on that airplane. We had a lot of uh, structural failures with the F-4 Phantoms. They were still flying when I went in, shows you my age. Uh, and they were decommissioning them because they had a lot of airframe fatigue. Uh, they were the most powerful jet ever made, and the airframes were a little light, uh, and they had a tail section issue. But I worked all night and all day, a couple weeks in a row, trying to get a, a couple of these... Uh, decrepit aircraft flying again and the captain says to me what I like about you is you don't tell me that it's uh, that you're gonna fix it you only come to me when it is fixed he says and you always got dirt all over you he says I know you work hard he says you're one of the hardest working he, sa he says you're one of the hardest working Marines I have on the ship he says and the funny thing is getting along with the Navy personnel as a Marine sometimes was it was just a, a hurdle to get over with but in all saying, the captain gave me a compliment that I was one of the hardest working people he had had. Um, I used to show up early, go home late. Uh, I don't know if I could do that anymore. Um, got a lot of miles on me. I'm high mileage. But having a business, I'm trying to do this for retirement. And getting screwed by people like Bikeberry, it's why I'm going into this and I'm going to take you down to Matt's shop. It cost me about $75 to maybe $90 to make the piston. What you get from me from $75 to $90, and I see those other internet people, they're getting charged about the same thing. To make the piston, the jug, and everything together, make it a bit larger, make it a bit more accommodable, and with the ports and stuff that, you know, the larger stuff to make these engines what they are, what you're getting from us, it's quite a feat. And at times when Matt has a government contract or he has another contract, it sort of overrides. My stuff gets pushed aside. So even if you want it, I might not be able to get it at this point. Uh, explaining I'm not everything, I'm not Mr. Superman. I try to be humble. But them deliberately just sending me shit in a box and charging me money for it and, and expecting me to lay down. This is going on YouTube, Bike Barry, and I'm going to give you the big biker's FU. I try to be a civil and nice guy uh, as much as I sound rough and... and I try to explain to people that this is a nice hobby, it's really enjoyable when this stuff does work right. But it's when you have a pile of turds you got to deal with from the internet uh, that, that turn it into a nightmare. And especially if you're trying to do it for a business and produce something for somebody, uh, all businesses are, are, are uh, limited, especially today. Nobody's making a lot of money. It's why a lot of stores, they don't accept returns and different things. They're, they're making a lot of bad policy. What it does is make you a non-customer like Bike Barry just did to me. Uh, what's going to happen now is when I shut this video off, the next video I upload here for spring for riding season, I'm going to have Bikeberry on the phone and you're going to be able to hear them do their idiot ship.
uh, I call it idiot ship. That's another uh, Navy term. We had uh, terms like nugget, idiot ship on the boat. Uh, pilots, engineers were, were just a bag full of humor when it comes to disastrous situations. Forgive my condescending tone because I'm a lot like that. I've, I've uh, run into police officers that do not like my, uh, my attitude. I've run into business associates. Uh, I try to be a perfectionist. I think maybe that is a mental personality flaw. A lot of people have run into that with me, to be honest with you. Uh, some people, they don't like you for that. But I'll tell you something, that's the best goddamn guy to buy something from, whether it's the house you bought, the car, or whatever. If that guy is condescending, you know he has taken his business to his heart. And this is where I'm hoping to pick you up as customers. When I get rolling with this, you order those parts for me, and I guarantee you it should fit together. I can't say Uncle Dutch never made a mistake. I told you that. There's two things I do. When I make a mistake, I make right for it. The second thing is, if and when I do make a mistake, I still apologize too. Nobody deserves to be feel left out of the loop that you're just another customer when it's a guy like me running the business versus a big corporation. Uh, they're more worried about their lunch break than, than your problem, a lot of them. Uh, I've, I've noticed that from Verizon on down the line. Lunch break is more important uh, at times. And then they do do good. I mean, you get one of the, one of the employees on the phone that does actually do their job just like on the Navy ship, we, uh, there were other places there were a lot of slackers. As a matter of fact, an air base over in Africa, I'll never forget the guy. Uh, it was kind of a cross between Hogan's Heroes, uh, MASH. I mean, it was laughable what was going on, but the security could have gotten a lot of people killed. The guy was just a total slacker, an alcoholic. Uh, and we had a few aviation accidents out of that base. It's probably still all under investigation. It might, might be litigated in court for... Who knows, decades. Uh, government doesn't like to admit they hire incompetent boobs, but really they do. I wasn't one of them, just so you know. So that's Harley B, and this is the type of stuff that's going on. Uh, I got half of what I needed, no gaskets, and everything's uh, the wrong size. If that's the way Whiteberry wants to do business, you can start bringing your business my way. Um, prices might be a little out of line at first uh, till I get rolling. It costs me money to buy inventory, but would you want to buy your stuff from a guy that you can rot, rely on, or do you want to take potluck like this and it's riding season and you don't, you don't have your bike going? I can feel for these other customers of mine, and that's why I'm making this video. You know, the least fit that these guys that make these parts could actually stamp the size that maybe the incompetent idiot could actually read what the size of the part is. Instead, it says CB110 on the part. So whoever you are that makes CB, whether that's BR tuning or whoever makes this part that I got from Bikeberry, this hub adapter versus mine that I make, which the machining isn't quite as pretty, uh, mine are at least stamped what size it is. I mean, what kind of moron are you? Any, even auto parts are stamped with some sort of size or, or, or number. A lot of them, they have a corresponding item number. Okay. Well, this is made for idiots that are working behind a computer desk that are probably didn't graduate high school or dropped out. That's the guy that got me this part. And he couldn't actually take his, even a ruler would work. It would show you it's an inch and a half in diameter. These are fun. They're probably one of the best things made outside of milk and cookies and a good candy bar or a a beer after a hot day. Uh, it's probably one of the best, most enjoyable therapeutic hobbies is, you know, especially when you get one, like I have a couple of them and I've made them, they, they really cook and my customer climbs on the bike and he's like, holy Christ, this ain't like the one my buddy has. You're right. I take pride in my work and I don't give you a piece of shit like this. Those are the things that make people like me hot and it's so that people understand that people like me try a little bit harder. You're out there scratching your head. You don't know what's wrong with your bike. It won't start. I give people a lot of free answers so you can do things yourself. But there's times you got to rely on a guy like me because he might just know a little bit more or it's more convenient. Like I tried to take that scooter to Cosmo Scooters and they screwed me and screwed me and screwed me and it's still not together and it may never go together. I may not be able to get the rest of those parts. I'm, I'm out. Uh, if you know anybody that has part, parts for those VFR scooters, uh, it came back to me with a few missing pieces I didn't even notice. Uh, the guy had me so hot under the collar, it was lucky, it was lucky me and the other Marine weren't in jail. 
So, in saying that, in all considerations, uh, people, one bad business affects another business that it can't function, it can't do its job. I like people to understand that I like to do my job. Uh, this is my office. Uh, I even have a bondage Barbie. Uh, I gotta, maybe we'll save that for another time if you want to see it. But guys like me uh, were facetious, uh, but I could say we're, we're just as uh, articulate. Uh, we're guys that like a lot of neat things, and I like other people <coughs> like you out there in Harley B land. I want you to have a bike like mine. I want it to fly. I want you to say, God, boy, you know, what you told me really works. Uh, we're going to start with the SHA carburetors, too. They make a jetting package for those. People start fooling with them. It's another thing I can't get parts for. Those gaskets where that internal filter is on the side, that little side cover that bolts on where the fuel neck is, uh, I have two brand new ones that are leaking uh, right from the factory, and I can't stop them from leaking. Uh, I have to call eBay about that. Uh, makes me very angry when I order something and it's and it's a pile of uh, shit brand new and it's happening to people like you I know it's just not me I had a couple of the SHA carburetors where I said the fuel port wasn't even drilled the fuel bowl wasn't even filling up and I'm thinking why the hell doesn't this bike run and the one I actually unbolted the intake manifold and put a stock intake on it and a stock carburetor and the son of a bitch almost threw me off the bike uh, you're not ready for it. You're thinking it's not going to run your mindset, even as professional as I want to tell you I am. Sometimes uh, even things grab me by the ass. But I at least had enough brain power to, to bolt another. I didn't have another SHA carb at the time. So then I took it apart and dissected it, and that actually went together, back together, and didn't leak. I don't know what they're doing to the new SHA carburetors, but right there where the fuel filter is on the side of, uh, where the fuel neck goes in, uh, I can't stop them from leaking. I don't know if I can get an O-ring. I'm, I'm looking for gaskets. I'm looking for a solution to that issue. But as far as the solution to BikeBerry, we're going to see what BikeBerry has to say on the phone today, and you folks are going to get to hear what they have to say right on the telephone. So I wanted to thank you for that. As soon as they answer, I'm going to switch on, so I'm hoping that this is a different type of video for you guys. Thank you. <laughs>